Hello guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel of The Concept Guy and today we will talk about a particular feature of chemical process safety that is flammability diagram. So what do we understand by this flammability diagram? So we will go from a very basic understanding of it and we will draw the diagram and we will see how it varies, what are the different, the different markings in the diagram and understand how this marking actually came up. So we will not just rote memorize the diagram, but we will understand why this diagram came up. So flammability diagram, as you can see, means flames ability diagram. Flames means it is the ability to cause flames. Flames means fire in this sense. So for a fire, we need generally three things. So let us consider this triangle. We need for a fire to occur because we want to prevent fires. We know, must know how it will occur. So for fire to occur, we need oxygen. We need the fuel. And we need some ignition source. Okay. So our basic, basic understanding is that for a fire to occur, we need all three components. Unless it will not occur. Only oxygen and fuel won't actually cause fire. Because it needs some ignition source. Or if we just consider that if there's fuel only and ignition source, but there's no oxygen, then how can the fire can actually caught up? So for favorite diagram, we will discuss how these things vary. So let's draw the diagram first. It's better to use scale for this. So... So we will take a di triangle, triangular diagram first because three things are important so we can actually represent in a triangle. Three sides, three vertices. Now, for general purposes, we take the oxygen here above. That means oxygen from 0 to 100% percentage. Okay, from 0 to 100% oxygen in this side. Okay, there could be markings like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So these are gaps of 10, 10, 10 percent and so 10, 20 and from 0 to 100 this side. Then from here 0 to 100 and from 0 to again 100. But what are these? 0 to 100 here would be some inert source like nitrogen. So this is our oxygen area. This is our let's say nitrogen area or inert source and this is our fuel area. 0 to 100 percent. Fuel moves like this, oxygen increases like this and nitrogen increases like this. Okay. So what we have to take here is this is a flammability diagram. So why we have taken three, a triangular diagram? Because three components are there. Now what we'll see that let us because this is a let us consider this O, F, and N. So let us consider for airline we need a airline. An airline is important because what happens if there is no oxygen available? So let's say we have only fuel plus N2. Okay. Then in this case, what happens that no oxygen, only fuel plus N2. N2 is in the air actually. So oxygen will be also there in the air according to this N2. So we will take that this N2 in the air is 79%, right? That is fixed. So we will first mark this accordingly. And around 70, 90, 80, 90, around here like, or what is this mark? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's not take this. So around here, 79% nitrogen in air. So when nitrogen is 79%, our fuel is 0%. Why? Only air. Okay. If we say only air, air has. So this is a mixture. If fuel is 0%, then N2 is 79%. Because only air is present. What will happen if fuel is now taken to 100%? Fuel now 100%, the N2 value will decrease its percentage. Because earlier it was all N2 and no fuel. Now all fuel and some N2, some N2 will be there. Because air is still present in the mixture. So 100% fuel is 100% fuel. This side, let's take the markings. Uh, 1, 2, 9, 8, 7, let's take 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So 100%, 100% fuel and this line from 100% fuel to some N2 to 0% fuel with some. So this is our airline. This is our airline. So our green demarcation is airline. Now one important thing is that if there is a point anywhere here, how do we measure, let's say point A, how do we measure what is the percentage of oxygen, fuel and nitrogen? So for that, for fuel percentage, take a line parallel to this, N2. Take a line parallel to N2 for fuel percentage. This is the fuel percentage at point A. For, now we need the percentage of N2. So should we take it directly up here, perpendicular? But no, we, we don't do that because these lines are somewhat taken like this. So it's like this, this, this. And this, this, this. So you can understand that because it's a triangle and not a rectangle, so we cannot take straight axis. 
So for n2, a point here, what we'll do, we'll slightly shift the diagram. And when we shift the diagram, now the point A, our n2 would be just parallel to this. So n2 will be somewhat point here. For O2, so this point here, n2 here, and this for O2, again shift the diagram. And then we see that this O2 is nothing but parallel to this. So hence, for n2 parallel to o2 line for o2 parallel to fuel line and for fuel line fuel percentage parallel to n2 line next what we take is the ufl and NF lfl so let's take a, a particular ufl is given to us a particular lfl is given to us we will extend the point to this airline because in ufl and lfl we are talking about the fuel in particular lower flammability limit and uh, upper flammability, flammability limit and lower flammability so this corresponds to the fuel so in the fuel plus air we have the fuel so this is our ufl and this is our LFL in the air line. Next, what we have to do is take a stoichiometric line. So a stoichiometric line, and as we understand, stoichiometric that means if we consider a reaction where this is CnH two n plus two, a fuel, let's say, and this is our fuel, and plus some stoichiometric amount, let's say Z of O two reacts to give CO two amount plus water in their respective ratios. We are not concerned with that, but we will just concern with that that one mole of fuel is concerned with z mole of o2 so and now we have a mixture of fuel plus o o2 plus n2 so in this mixture if n2 is zero if in this mixture n2 is zero then one mole of fuel needs to react with z mole of o2 this is the stoichiometry so if n2 is zero then the amount of fuel and o2 would be like if we say the amount of o2 would be the percentage of o2 let be so it will be z upon total one plus z so mole fraction of this into 100 percentage right so what is this assumption when n2 is 0 so in this diagram let's take n2 0 so at this point when n2 is 0 what will happen z by 1 plus z percent so let us take assume it like for different fuels different z will be there for, for our convenience let's take z to be this point to be this percentage point let's take o dash point this o dash point is here from this o dash point if we increase the percentage of nitrogen slowly and gradually this overall mixture would be z upon 1 plus z plus some n2 so this fraction would actually keep on decreasing decrease 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 until a point when the fuel is zero when fuel is zero so when fuel is zero but we find out that this 100 percent oxygen no fuel is zero so a point where fuel is zero if fuel is zero then o2 will be zero because no combustion fuel zero o2 will be zero so at this point fuel zero o2 O2 is also zero. Oxygen and fuel both are zero. Only 100% nitrogen. So this stoichiometric thing is applicable at these two points, and we can join them to get the stoichiometric line. Just join them. So I hope you understand why this these two lines came up. One is when fuel and air, and other is when fuel and O2. Okay. So this, is, this is stoichiometric line. This is air line. Air line. We consider 79% uh, nitrogen in air when fuel is zero, and when the nitrogen is zero, then Oxygen is the at the stoichiometric value. Next, what we see is there is a LOC, kind of similar of line of control, but what here LOC means, it means let's take this point. This is the LOC. Above this, so LOC is a particular concentration of oxygen, limiting concentration, listen, limiting oxygen concentration. Below which, below this LOC point, there is not much much energy for the system to heat up and, and catch fire. So limiting oxygen, it is a limiting oxygen concentration. Now let's take, because the, it's a limiting value, it should be a lower value. So let's take it to be around, uh, let's take it to be around here. Okay. So it will actually meet, this point will actually meet the stoichiometric line. Okay. And proceed further. This is point and these two lines are parallel because this is the percentage of oxygen and we know that for any point on this line, the percentage of oxygen would be this. So this is a limiting oxygen concentration that is required. So we want oxygen concentration above this to actually a fire to occur. So this is a point of intersection of this uh, stoichiometric line and LOC point. So this is LOC. What is LOC? The minimum oxygen, limiting oxygen concentration which above which the fire can occur. And this stoichiometric line says that the oxygen concentration with stoichiometric ratio of the fuel. So for fuel to come uh, go into combustion, this is the oxygen percentage and for the overall mixture to actually heat up and catch fire this is the oxygen concentration so there will be a meeting point of both these points and from here this meeting point we can find out two things one is wait a second let me make it a little better okay 
so so ignore this line this is the main line so one is u o l that is upper oxygen limit and the other is if you draw it so from this nose we have one limiting oxygen concentration and this actually intersects with the stoichiometric line so oxygen the limiting oxygen and the stoichiometric oxygen both being same can be extended in a way if we not in a line but in a way that there is a certain region out here and this is our flame flammability region so any mixture in this region will actually catch fire L lol limiting oxygen L uh, limiting oxygen limit uh, and upper lo lower oxygen limit and upper oxygen limit so any point here will catch fire what is most important to note here is that this ufl in the air line meets with this ul so ufl and u o l meets and the further meet to this nose point this is our important point in the whole flammability diagram from here stoichiometric line and loc meet so we can find out that particular point with loc and this concentration of oxygen in the fuel mixture are same to actually combustion occurs and the fire propets initiates so lol and ul can be find out and this point not this point this loc loc point so our both things are like this this is our let's say this is our stoichiometric line and this is our loc this is our nose point okay so this is our nose point and the ufl and uol meet at this nose point while the lol and this lfl meet at this nose point also one can find out this relation that loc is equal to z times of lfl how z is moles of o2 by moles of fuel and lfl says that moles of flammability of fuel so moles of fuel by total moles